Hey guys, I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread, and today I'm going to tell you about everything I sewed in the month of November. So this month I had a few big projects, but I had quite a lot of small ones that I'm going to tell you about. I'll start with the bigger ones first, and the first one I'll tell you about is the bigger project, which is the shirt jacket that I'm wearing. This is the Julian Chore Coat by a French pattern company called Ready to Sew. I wasn't actually familiar with this pattern company or this pattern, but I had bought this fabric and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I reached out to you guys, my viewers, and had a really good suggestion, well actually two really good suggestions for this jacket. So there is a Ruth that I've been known for a while. Hello Ruth, she is over on Instagram. We've been friends for a couple of years. And there's also another Ruth who recommended it who I just know through YouTube. So thank you to both of the Ruths. You both had a really great idea and it was exactly the right pattern for this fabric. This fabric, like I said, I had it shipped to my parents' house in Chicago when I was visiting in the summer. It's from Melanated Fabrics, which is an American fabric company. Anyone who's tried to buy fabric internationally knows that the shipping cost is generally not worth it. But because I was going to be going to the States, I thought, ooh, I can buy from the fabric shops that I can't usually access in the UK very easily. And I'm so glad that I got this fabric. It is absolutely perfect and beautiful and cozy and lovely. As you can see, it's a really nice scale to this. It's called the Buffalo Check. Black and white, absolutely classic, goes with everything. The outside is just like a normal woven cotton. It is 100% cotton. There's a bit of a slubby nature to it, which I really like, but the inside is flannel, so it's really soft and fuzzy and cozy. It is a heavier weight fabric than I was necessarily expecting, and so for that reason, I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, and it turned out to be so good. I don't think there's been a day since I've worn this that I haven't, there hasn't been a day since I made this that I haven't worn it. It's so great, it's so nice to just throw over whatever I'm wearing, whether it's pajamas or if I'm going out. Probably less suited for pajamas, but look, it's cozy and I really don't care and it makes me happy. There are a lot of nice details on this jacket as well. I will obviously put up some pictures so you will be able to see them in a bit more detail, but I'm gonna just show you a little bit on me so that you can see what I'm talking about. The first thing to show you is these lovely big pockets. Always a fan of a big pocket. It's a really nice deep and wide pocket. It's got a bit of a slash here, which I think is a cool look to it. There's a breast pocket as well. I decided as far as the pockets not to pattern match because I felt like I wanted you to see them. I didn't want them to be invisible, but I did try to keep like the lines going across even when it's buttoned up. Hopefully you can see. Sorry, I'm, I'm coming out of frame. I just want to show you what I'm talking about. When it's buttoned up, the lines matched pretty well going across. So I think both vertically and horizontally that was a pretty good job overall there that I did. Pretty happy with that. Same with the sleeves and the cuffs. So there's a nice cuff detail on here. I wanted it to not match because I didn't want it to look like it was one continuous piece. I like to add that as a feature and draw attention to those things. There are some really nice finishing details on the jacket as well. So the inside of the side seam is French seams. The inside of the sleeve is French seams as well. The seams on the shoulder and the sleeves are like a faux flat felt seam. So you do um, like a surged edge and then you fold it over and top stitch along there, which is a really nice strong and secure seam. On the whole, a lot of the details just mean that it's gonna be lasting me for years. And it has a really nice, neat, professional looking finish on the outside as well as on the inside, which I really love. There are buttons obviously going down the front and there's buttons on the cuffs. And I decided to go ahead for a contrast button. These buttons you may or may not recognize. Any of you eagle eyes out there might remember I got a whole roll of these buttons from Vogue Fabrics when I was in Chicago. They were for super cheap. So I have still loads of them left and they're a really cute option I think for this. But I love the contrast. I think the hot pink against the black and white is really cool. It's giving me like a kind of early 90s vibes which I'm not having any problems with. I think it's pretty cool. But I feel like overall it's just a really cool shirt jacket and it's a really great weight that in like the spring or the autumn I could easily just wear it as a jacket but in the colder times I can throw it on as another layer or when I'm in the house if I'm feeling a little bit chilly. 
I know I'm going to be wearing this one a lot and I do think this is a pattern that I'm going to be going back to. Really happy with how it turned out and like I said, I've barely taken it off so it's a big win for me for sure. The next things I can tell you about, I'm going to tell you about three shirts that I made, but I'm not going to get into a lot of detail because I did many videos on the shirts. So if you want to know more about them, I will put a link to the start of the whole battle of the, well, it's actually the, the Clash of the Patterns, Troublesome T-Shirt Tussle. I really need to get a hold of myself with all this alliteration, but you know what? I was having fun and I'm not going to stop. So <laughs> that's my Clash of the Patterns series. Basically, I compared three different t-shirt patterns to see what I liked the best, what worked for me as far as the fit and the style, but also looking into much more detail with the patterns and things. So like I said, I'll put a, a link to the first video of the series if you want to see a bit more about these t-shirts, but I will tell you about them because they are something I made this month. So the first one is well, it's not the first one necessarily, but the first one I'll tell you is the Gable Top by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I will put up pictures again so that you can see what it's like on me, but it's a really nice slash neckline. It's a really overall pretty good fit. I could have done with a better fit over the hip, so I will definitely size up. I sized up one size at the hip, but I will go up two or three sizes in the future, and I would also shorten it because it ends up being really long, but overall it was a good fit. It's a good shape. I really love this silhouette on me and I know that that one's going to get a whole lot of wear. And then I also made this one is the Classic Tee by Love Notions. I have to say this one was not such a big love for me. I did not like the way that this one looked on my body. I love the fabric and I'm planning to do something with the fabric, but it's not really a shirt that I'm going to be wearing a lot. It's a bit oversized on me. The proportions are just all a bit wrong. I don't like where the neckline is. I don't like the, the width of the sleeve is a little bit baggy on me. Overall, it's just not the kind of style that I'm looking for in a t-shirt. So my plan with this is to actually take this fabric and use it to make another shirt. So I do have a little bit of this fabric left. This one came from Vogue Fabrics actually. It's a viscose jersey. It's got a nice slubby texture to it as you can hopefully see. It's really soft. I love the color on me, so I think it is one that I want to try and do something with. I think between the front and the back pieces and the extra just scraps, remnants that I had left over from the shirt, I should be able to get another top out of it, so that's what I'm hoping to do. I should say this one, the gable top, the fabric came from a D stash, so Elisa, who is Sloths and Orchids on YouTube and on Instagram. She did a D stash and I got some really great fabrics for a really low, low price. That was a viscose jersey that I got from her and it is beautiful. I really, really love it and I still have more left. So we will be seeing more of that fabric, definitely. And then the third shirt I can tell you about, I'm wearing underneath here because again, I really love it and I'm just wearing it a lot. So this one is the Concord Tee by Cashmere It's in a bamboo jersey. So it's a black bamboo jersey that I got from Blackbird Fabrics. Similar to the Melanated Fabrics order, I had this fabric sent to my parents' house in the States when I was there because it was going to be much cheaper shipping. This one, I am so impressed with the fit overall. It is so good. And it's also got this really great sleeve detail where there's a little sleeve tab with a button, which is just super cute. Same buttons, by the way. I use those same hot pink buttons because I just think it really pops and it looks really good. And I do like to just add emphasis on those little design details because I think they're special and you want to celebrate them. So these are the bigger projects that I've made and I've got a whole load of smaller projects to tell you about. The first small one to tell you about is a popcorn bag that I made. So this is just a little baggy so you can see it's got this cute rainbow fabric just because I was using up some scraps and that was one that I found that was a big enough piece. So it's got little rainbows on there and it is a fold over pouch. This is 100% quilting cotton with cotton thread inside and it's just a little baggy basically in here. And you fill it up with popcorn, stick it in the microwave and then you can use it like you would, like you can use sometimes paper bags for this, or when you buy microwave popcorn, it replaces that, and so it's less wasteful, it's 
more um, cost effective if you're buying your own popcorn kernels anyway and it's healthier you don't have to put oil in there in the pan or something like that so it's a really great way to make popcorn it is so much fun to use i really enjoyed stick it in the microwave and watching it fill up with popcorn i got the tutorial from christine sews a lot she's got a youtube channel with a tutorial that i will link down in the description box because it was a really great tutorial to follow and such a fun project and i will be using this a lot another great scrap buster as well. So I was really happy to be able to use up some of my scraps on this one. Next up is a pair of undies that I made. So I used the same fabric that I'm wearing now. So this bamboo jersey that I got from Blackbird Fabrics. I have heard that this is really great fabric to use for making underwear. And so I thought I wanted to get a little bit extra of this fabric so that I'd be sure that I had some bits left over for it. And I will definitely be making more. This is a free underwear pattern from Zoe. She has Sozo blog or she's Sozo, I believe over on Instagram. She is somebody who has a free underwear pattern and I wanted to give it a go. The way she described the fit and the coverage sounded like exactly what I'm interested in underwear. So it's not super high, but it's also not super low rise. It's reasonable coverage across the bum. It's almost sort of a cross between like a brief and a boy short kind of style. I generally tend to prefer like the shorts or the briefs, but not super bikini small. And this is like exactly the shape and the fit was spot on. I was really impressed. I just went with what the measurements were, which were basically my hip measurement. And they fit me so well. They're really comfortable. I would definitely be making more of these. So you're not going to see these on me, but you can get the idea. Underwear is underwear, right? But it was a lot of fun to make. And it was my first time using this kind of fold over elastic. And I will say mine is not like super neat. There's definitely areas where I could have stitched a little bit straighter. There's bits where it's kind of folded up. And I stitched a little bit too close to the edge. This is all to do with me not being used to using these types of materials, but I will still definitely wear them. And I really enjoyed using a little contrast for the bands. And it's a fun one. I do recommend having a go. I've heard that they're a good way to use up jersey scraps in general. So I'm definitely gonna be using some of my other smaller bits of like old t-shirt scraps and things and just see how that works out. But that was a fun one. The next thing I'll tell you about are some scrunchies. So I actually made, how many did I get here in the end? Six, one, two, three. Yeah, I made six scrunchies. I didn't actually have any scrunchies. I, I remember scrunchies being one of those things that, you know, many of us made and wore a lot or used a lot in the 90s. And I did make scrunchies as one of the first things that I made, just kind of figured out how to make them. But I didn't have any still that I could wear that I could use. I'd gotten rid of all those or maybe even left at my parents' house. Honestly, I don't know. But I wanted to have a go with making some scrunchies because I've been using hair bands that I feel like pull on my hair. They're not as good for your hair as like the soft fabric when you put your hair up. And the, the hair bands that I had were getting really tired and worn out. And I didn't want to buy more if I knew that I could make them. And I have so many fabric scraps that are just sitting around that don't have anything to be done with them. And so I thought I would just pull out some fun, bright, colorful scraps, make some scrunchies, and then I've got some options. Because you can make these with jersey stretch fabrics or like cotton fabrics. You can pretty much make a scrunchie with anything and you don't need that big of a piece of fabric. So those are a fun one and I'm definitely glad that I've got those now that I can be using and I have been using them a ton. Another scrap busting project that I've got to share are these little, they're called bowl cozies. I'll have to put some pictures in with bowls in them so you can see what I'm talking about. But they are quilting cotton fabrics, 100% cotton again, and cotton thread as well so they are microwavable. It's just two layers of fabric that have been quilted together. So you have like a square that you stitch in a little bit into these angles to make it slightly more bowl shaped. And then you put a bowl inside there and you can either just use it to hold something hot that you're eating. So then you can eat out of your hand with bowl or with the bowl cozy, or you can use it to actually go into the microwave if you're reheating stuff. If you've ever reheated anything in a bowl in the microwave, you know how hot that is when you're trying to take it out and stir it and put it back in. It's like crazy hot. So this means that you can put this, put the bowl in there, stick it in the microwave, pull the whole thing out and it's like a little oven glove and it keeps your hands from burning and it also keeps your food a little bit warm as well. So I've got a couple of designs that I did. So this one, I let my husband pick out the fabrics he wanted to have for his bowl cozy. And I really love that he went for the little lightning bowl. I think that was extremely appropriate for a microwavable bowl. And then I went for this one that has more, I feel like 
autumnal suit vibes in my mind. That's what I was <laughs> getting from these fabrics. But they're really fun. We've used them a lot. My husband, I was happy to see reach for them even when I wasn't having anything hot. He was like, ooh, this bowl's hot with my soup. I need to go get my bowl cozy. So I was happy that they're going to be used because I don't like making things that don't actually get used and loved. I would rather make something that, you know, people are going to appreciate. The last one to tell you about is a partially complete, completed project. So it's a quilt that I've been working on that I've told you guys about before. You may or may not remember, I was designing a quilt for my niece out of squares of different rainbow colored fabric. So I wanted to create the effect of a rainbow, but almost like a pixelated rainbow. And I had quite a few different fabrics that I was putting together. I do not imagine I'll be able to show it to you very well like this. I think I'll have to put some images up, but I have pieced together the main part of the rainbow and apparently my math was wrong. I was designing this quilt pattern like I know what I'm doing. I somehow thought that I'd be able to just design a quilt pattern, use my brain, and apparently I didn't do so hot. So it is too small, like pretty significantly too small. So my plan is that I'm gonna keep it as it is and I'm gonna add some kind of border around it, which I haven't worked out yet. But hopefully you can get a bit of a feel. So that's like the purple corner. There's like a white cloudy section leading into the purple and blue. Then we've got the greens and the yellows down here, which then leads into the red in the bottom corner. So I hope you get an idea. I really do think this looks pretty phenomenal as it is. I love how it looks. The back, you can see my little quilted lines. I think I did pretty good overall. I'm not that experienced of a quilter, so I'm like praising myself when I've done something well. But I think this is gonna be really cool, but I just need to figure out, like I said, some kind of border to go around it, just to make it a little bit bigger. It is evenly too small because I obviously did the right math to get the right ratio for the length and the width, but something went funky with the size of the squares. I think they should have been bigger, but I, I like the size of them. They were like three inch squares and then I've got half inch, or sorry, quarter inch seam on each side. So I think they're a good size and I'll just have to figure out how I'm gonna finish that, but watch the space that will come. I do also have something else that I made that I can't show you or I'm most of the way through and I'll be finishing the next couple of days, which is a Christmas present. I'm making a Blackwood cardigan as a Christmas present, but I don't wanna give anything more away because I haven't told the person that they're getting it and I don't wanna spoil any surprises for Christmas. So those are the things that I've been up to as far as my sewing. I have also been working on some knitting for a project or a present for some Christmas presents for my work colleagues that I mentioned in a previous video. I've been doing some embroidery on top of some mug cozies that I'm making. I'm nearly finished with the embroidery, but again, I don't wanna show them now just in case we're getting close to the time where I'm gonna be sharing them to my work colleagues or giving them to my work colleagues. I don't want any of them to have their surprise spoiled. So those will be coming out. You'll probably see it on a Vlogmas video in December if you watch my Vlogmas videos. But this is gonna be my last video of November. I mean, it's pretty close to the end of November, so just as well. But if you are not aware, I am planning to take part in Vlogmas. So I'm gonna be doing a video vlog once a day in December. I am really excited about it. I've got a lot planned. I think it's gonna be so much fun. You will see much more of just day in the life and what I get up to in London, have some nice Christmas activities and things planned. So I think it will be a whole lot of fun and I hope that you join me. In general, I will have lots more videos coming out just purely sewing related after the Christmas period as well. So if you're not into the whole daily vlog stuff, don't worry, come like 26th of December, don't worry, we're getting back to normal activities and I have quite a lot planned for you guys in the new year as well. Thank you so much for watching my video today. It's really great to see more people following me. I recently hit 2,000 subscribers, which is wild and really exciting. And I really appreciate all of you out there who are watching my videos, who are subscribing to my channel, hitting that like button so that other people find me. And your comments are just such a joy to be able to you know, chat back with you and feel like I know who is watching my videos. It feels like a bit more of a two-way conversation. So. Please do always leave those comments if you have any thoughts and you're wondering, ah, should I mention it? Please say, I love to hear from you guys. It really does make my day to get those comments and to get to be able to have a chat with you. I hope all of you are doing very well. I will be seeing you very, very soon on the 1st of December with my first Vlogmas video. Until then, take care guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.